for ET LH2 pressurization. Liquid hydrogen replenish on the external tank is now being terminated. The astronauts are closing their helmet visors, allowing their suits to be fully pressurized. T minus one minute, 30 seconds, and counting. All systems are go. We're about 90 seconds from the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery. T minus one minute, 15 seconds. The liquid hydrogen tank inside the external tank is reported to be at the proper flight pressure. T minus one minute and counting. The booster joint heaters are being deactivated at this time. T minus 50 seconds. Transitioning to orbital internal power, Discovery is now running off of its three onboard fuel cells. T minus 38 seconds and counting. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start at T minus 31 seconds. CLS is go for auto sequence start. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. The sound suppression water system has been activated. We have a go for main engine start. And we have main engine start. Two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery. Celebrating its 25th birthday by racking up science and supplies to the space station. Houston now controlling the midnight ride of Rick Sterko and his crew to the International Space Station. Discovery rolling on to the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Outpost. Thirty-two seconds into the flight. The three liquid fuel main engines soon will throttle back to 72% of rated performance down in the bucket, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it goes transonic. Discovery three and a half miles in altitude, four miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Standing by for the throttle up call now from Capcom Eric Bowe. Discovery. The throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Rick Sterko, joined on the flight deck by pilot Kevin Ford, flight engineer Jose Hernandez, and Pat Forrester. Seated down on the mid deck are Danny Olivas, Christopher Fugelsang of the European Space Agency, and Nicole Stott, hitching a ride for three months on the International Space Station. One minute, 30 seconds into the flight. All of Discovery systems performing normally, 17 miles in altitude, 18 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. One minute, 50 seconds into the flight, standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Booster officer confirms staging a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. The onboard computers steering the shuttle for its precise path to the International Space Station. Discovery 37 miles in altitude, 54 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Three good main engines. Three good auxiliary power units. Three good fuel cells. Discovery, two engine maroon. Copy, two engine maroon. Three minutes into the flight. 
Everything going very well for Discovery, 47 miles in altitude, 85 miles downrange. The orbital maneuvering system engines ignited, Discovery kicking on the afterburners for 1 minute 52 seconds, assisting the shuttle and its crew on their climb to orbit. Discovery flying on the singular power of its three liquid fuel main engines, draining a half a ton of fuel per second from the shuttle's large fuel tank. Discovery coming up on the point of negative return, where the shuttle will be too far downrange, too high in altitude to return to the launch site in the event of an engine failure. Discovery, negative return. Discovery speeding straight as an arrow on its night flight toward a date with the International Space Station Sunday night. Four minutes, eight seconds into the flight, Discovery 61 miles in altitude, 163 miles downrange from the Cape. All systems in great shape. More than halfway toward its preliminary orbit, Discovery's engines, fuel cells, and auxiliary power units performing as advertised. Discovery now 212 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. The environmental systems officer reports the activation of a good flash evaporator system providing cooling for Discovery's avionics until the payload bay doors are open an hour and a half into the flight. Five minutes into the ascent toward orbit. This view from a camera on the external fuel tank. Discovery, press to ATO, select Istris. Press to ATO, we'll select Istris. That call from Capcom Eric Bowe indicating that Discovery can make minimal abort to orbit targets uh, in the event of an engine failure. However, all three main engines continue to perform perfectly. Discovery, single engine, Ops 3. Copy, single engine, Ops 3. Discovery now 336 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, coming up on the six minute mark into the flight. The guidance officer in mission control confirming that Discovery's computers have commanded the main engines to swivel again, enabling the shuttle to roll to a heads up position above the fuel tank gaining more favorable communications through the tracking and data relay satellite system as it heads uphill. Single engine Istris 104. Discovery, Roger. And Discovery, press to Miko. Roger, press to Miko. That call from Capcom Eric Bowe indicating that Discovery can make normal main engine cutoff targets in the event of an engine failure. However, six and a half minutes into the flight, all three main engines performing normally. Discovery now.